In this video, we're going to talk about how I mastered data structure and algorithms. But before we jump in, I have a few disclaimers. Disclaimer number one is that at the end of the day, people have different learning needs. For example, what works for me might not work as well for Sally or for Joe or for whoever. However, hopefully you can find little gems, you know, little tips and tricks that you can use in your own studying. And then disclaimer number two, master is such like a strong word, you know. I do feel very confident in this stuff. You know, I studied it for seven months. Back in the day, I took two classes on this. You know, I was able to pass technical interviews at companies known for having hard, you know, data structure and algorithm type interviews. So, you know, your girl knows a little something, something. But I just wanted to give that disclaimer just because I do consider myself a lifelong learner. Like what I know now, I can't even imagine what I'm gonna know in five years from now. So, yeah, those are the disclaimers. But let's just jump into this. So I hate to be cheesy, but I feel like one of the first steps is to figure out what your why is. Just because in order to master anything, it's going to take a lot of time. Like I forgot what they said, but it takes like 10,000 hours in order to learn something, something like that. But it's really important to understand why do you want to go on this journey? Just because it is going to be a journey because of the amount of willpower, time spent, dedication that you are going to put into this. So, you know, maybe your why is you want to really, you know, do well in your data structures class coming up. You know, maybe you want to get a new job in big tech. Welcome to the series. You know, maybe you just want to be a better computer scientist and this is one of those concepts that you really wanted to learn. Whatever your why is, I would figure that out before you go down this journey just because on days that it's harder to do this, you know, on days that you want to give up, you can always go back to your why. And it's also okay to have multiple whys. Like I think for me, one of it was that I wanted to get a new job and like, you know, to get a new job, you got to know those data structures and algorithms for most companies or some companies. I should say but I think also I really wanted to challenge myself like y'all like these types of interviews used to really intimidate me I didn't do so well <laughs> to be honest like they were really hard for me however I want to see if I put in the time and effort could I become better and could I master it and I did so I just want to say that like really understanding your why up front can really help you stay disciplined throughout your journey of mastering data structures okay so now you understand your your why boom did that <laughs> but now I think it's also good to kind of take that step back and understand the bigger picture before you start digging into little things here and there so for example I found myself thinking why do companies test data structures and algorithms do just one company decide to do that and all the other companies follow or like behind the scenes what are they really trying to do what are they trying to test you know, I found myself thinking about what they used to do back in the day and how they used to give you like these trivia type questions, like how many golf balls fit in a bus. And you know what they wanted to see was like, will you ask the size of a golf ball? Will you ask the size of the bus? Will you ask if people are inside the bus or if it's empty? Like they wanted to see how you thought through the problem. How were you critically thinking about everything? And then when it comes to data structures and algorithms, that same vibe is there, y'all. Like, they want to see when you're given that question, are you asking those clarifying questions? You know, are you asking about what the input and the output should be? Are you, are you digging deeper into it and really understanding what the needs of that problem is? Like, that is still there. When I was studying these data structures and algorithms, what I was doing, and I didn't know I was doing this at the time, was I was really building up this, like, imaginary toolbox so that when I was given a new problem, I could just go back to this toolbox. Like, this toolbox had, like, all the different data structures we needed to know. It had all the different algorithms we needed to know, but also tips, tricks, and most importantly, patterns that I saw over time that I could just pull out when I needed to. And what was so interesting was that, you know, for some of these interviews, if you're studying data structures and algorithms for technical interviews, you know, it might be five interviews in one day. And what I noticed was like, maybe I did great on the first one, great on the second one, but then it came to that third one and I might not have gotten a solution out for it, like a perfectly coded out solution. However, the interviewer saw how I problem solved. Like even though when I was given like those leak code hard problems and I was walking through it, you know, 
I might not be able to solve the bigger problem, but I'll break this problem into smaller ones and be able to really solve the smaller ones. And you know, maybe I wasn't sure what data structure to use, but I'll talk about why arrays wouldn't work. I'll talk about why a tree wouldn't work, queues, stacks, like I would just go through my toolbox and let them know, cause this let them know that I do know my stuff. I just might be having problems with this particular problem. So I think as you're studying these data structures and algorithms, really keep track of why are you using it in this situation and not this situation? What are the benefits? What does your problem need? And what data structure or algorithm can best get you to a solution? So I think as you're studying, if you keep that in the back of your head, whoo, like that is going to be game changing. So you understand your why. You also understand the bigger picture. Now it's time to build out the game plan. So I feel like there's a lot of factors when it comes to building out the game plan. I think one of the most important ones is figuring out the data structures that you want to learn and study and eventually master. So for example, if you're doing it from a class standpoint, you can look at your class's syllabus and see like the different data structures that are going to be covered in order to you know get that head start. If you're coming from it from a technical interview standpoint, what I would do is say go directly to the company's website and see what data structures and algorithms they list there. A lot of companies actually do talk about the technical interview process and can give you more detail about it. So I would go straight to the source and figure that out. What you can also do is talk to recruiters at different companies just because they gonna know this like the back of their hand because this is what they do for a living. So reach out to one on LinkedIn. You know, feel free to go to Clubhouse. Social media, oh my goodness, so powerful. Go to these different social media platforms. Some people put it in their bios and reach out and ask what the interview process looks like. You know, just make sure to do your research first because if they just link you to the website, it's like, oh girl, you could have done that yourself. So definitely do that. And then of course, you know, other resources as well. You can use Core. Core actually has so much information about technical interviews. You know, YouTube, YouTube videos like this, blogs, all these different things. You know, just double check though. And just like make sure the information is accurate. You know, always double check. But yeah, use your different resources to figure out what data structures and algorithms you want to study. Next, you gotta figure out when your interview is. So for example, is your interview in two weeks, two months? Depending on what that time frame is, you can figure out how much time you want to spend on each of the data structures and algorithms. So that's something else that you have to play a role into your studying. From my own perspective, I have done data structure and algorithm type interviews in the past. Sometimes I spend two weeks on it, sometimes a month. You know, I never really like challenged myself in that way until now when I was just, you know, looking for a new job. That's when I really challenged myself. But for me, in order for me to really feel confident, it took seven months of studying. And when you think about it, like there's all these different data structures and like what you want to do is do a lot of problems for these different data structures so you can start to learn the tips the tricks, you can start to see patterns. It can also increase your speed. You know, an interview is 45 minutes. You gotta get to going. You know, it could be 45 minutes, it could be longer or shorter, but you really got to have that speed on you because you can know it, but then if the interview time is up, <laughs> so yeah, that was something else. But yeah, figure all of that out. And then, you know, what I, then the next thing that you have to do is figure out where you want to store your game plan. Just because you're going to keep coming back to this and checking things off. So you need to figure out where this is going to be. So in the past, I have used Trello. And you know, that worked good. You know, she was cute. But what really helped me was Eric Durant's technical interview study guide. So I have talked about this before and I will keep praising it just because it really helped to organize my studying. And it also made me realize that I don't want to spend too much time on one data structure and I could visually see that. So if you would also like to use the technical interview study guide, you can just go to Champagne Coder's Instagram. He's a software engineer that currently works at Google. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of links in his bio. Just click the link and then you'll see technical interview study guide. Click that and then you're going to see the Google Sheet and that is exactly what I use. I use like an older version of it and he's updated, but I'll definitely show mine as well just to show y'all that this is what a girl used. And you're going to see all the different data structures. Is that not only does, is it broken into different levels and you know you can move up to a new level as you do more problems, but I also like how he states like, you know, have you watched a video on this? Like, 
have you read a book on this topic? And I think that was so important because it really rounded out my studying. Like, yes, I'm doing all these problems, but you know, what are the streets saying about this data structure? What are people on YouTube saying? Like, do I truly understand this? And I feel like watching videos and different things like that really helped to like fill in the gaps where like some things were kind of missing. So I love how that is there. But <laughs> what I did was like after, you know, I did all of that stuff and I did all those problems on it, I started to really understand those patterns and I was putting it in my toolbox, y'all. And what Meezy and I are doing, we have came together, joined forces, and we have both been through so many different technical interviews, some at the same company, sometimes at different companies, and we've kept all of our notes. And then we also picked up on different patterns that we would use and we decided to put them all on these flashcards. So also a sample of one of these flashcards on the screen. But I think what makes them so special is like we're getting to the point, you know, for example, I love the way Meezy said it, but we give like a definition of, you know, each of the day of the structures. So for example, an interviewer who might ask, what is a hash table? And I have been asked that in an interview straight up. Can you give that one sentence description of what it is? And then we have all the gotchas, all the patterns, the tips and tricks that we needed to know. You know, the time complexity, the edge cases, you know, your problem might work great on positive numbers. What if they drew in a negative number? Will your algorithm still work? Like it's taking care of all those different things that we needed to know. So definitely follow us on Instagram because I feel like in Twitter, that's where we've been posting updates about it. And then also join the email listing. Like not only are we gonna talk about the data structure flashcards, but for me too, like I might wanna do like, you know, a session with someone and seeing how they do, like just different things like that to just join the mailing list. Thank you so much for subscribing y'all. I appreciate it so, 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 so much. In the next video, we're going to talk about the resources, the blogs, the YouTubers, the platforms that I use, and we're really gonna dive deep into those resources, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.